Saturday. This is a huge jug of water. Mm. I'm a little early, a couple more seconds while I set up. It says go live with Visma and if I click yes what happens I don't know <laughs> should I find out uh, okay bring them on camera can I do that let's see can I hi <laughs> hi <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just want to make sure that it's not just you and I, that it still has access for the others, too. Okay, well, see you later. All right, love. Glad you're joining us. Yeah, bye. <laughs> challenge um, to release, express, transmute, transform the energy of anger, uh, energy of fire. It's not bad in itself. Uh, yesterday I had a comment on a YouTube channel. It says, uh, unusual way to think about it, that anger is just energy. It's energy, just like sadness, just like depression, uh, you know, like and each energy, each feeling, each emotion has its own vibration. And so, but ultimately everything is energy, right? Everything is energy. This is energy. When we go down into the subatomic level, it's all energy. So is it anger. And so we have the choice to use it to our advantage um, and use it mindfully. You know, I don't want to say productively, but use it as a force to propel you to make a change, not necessarily just having that irrational reaction, you know, which oftentimes we go into our default setting, you know, default setting. Someone um, recently explained to me, if you have a pattern that has been established for many years, say like from childhood, and the, the groove in the brain is so deep because it's repeatedly followed that pattern and you're trying to change that pattern in, in that particular situation and you're trying to swear off to the other side, that groove hasn't been made yet. So imagine how much time and effort you have to repeatedly invest into it to make that groove deeper, you know, abandon the old and get into the new. And so somebody used an analogy of your, your existing patterns, behaviors, and thoughts, and beliefs could be as deep as Grand Canyon, you know, like this huge, huge channel. And that was like, oh, that makes sense, you know? So you have to be kind with yourself when you're trying to change a behavior that have served you in the past, you know, it was your defense mechanism, it was, uh, it's, it's a habit, a behavior, a belief that was developed to protect you, you know, and it's good, it served then, but you have to reevaluate, is it serving you now, and is it time to change it, and today I did want to bring your attention to um, looking and evaluating your beliefs, uh, you know, uh, beliefs that kind of get passed down to us uh, culturally, ethnically, through gender, you know, I'll give you an example. I was raised in a way that uh, there was no question in my mind uh, whether or not I should get married or should have kids. I was raised in a way that I as a woman meant to have children. 
I never thought about that question, which is a huge question. It's a life-changing question. I never thought of it by myself. From my perspective, should I have children or should I not? Like, am I cut out to have kids or not? Like, I had no my own concept about it. I just was raised in a way that, yeah, I have kids. I have to have kids. And <laughs> more than that, I was like, my biological clock is ticking, you know? Um, so just reevaluate. And what else to add to it? I used to judge people that would say that they weren't going to have kids. How could you be so selfish? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, who am I? Who am I? You know, so I'm just sharing with you things that come up for me as a result of this practice, and it will definitely be different for you. Uh, but let's look at the beliefs that we grew up with, and let's evaluate those things and see if they work for you. You know, what, what I take away from this is that I tell my children all the time, I have three boys, if you choose to get married, if you choose to have children, I am not I'm not assuming and I'm not pushing my agenda onto them. And I'm sitting with the question, do I want to be a grandma? You know, like, it's fair, it's legit. We have to look at those things rather than just following societal expectations. You have to question everything, everything. So here we go. We're going to tune in on Namo Guru Dev Namo, followed by Mangala Charan. Three times. Again, if it doesn't resonate with you, you simply could close your eyes and breathe deeply to center yourself, to ground yourself, and to bring yourself into the space of awareness. All right. We're going to sit an easy seated. Bring your hands into prayer mudra in front of the heart center. Let's take a deep inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. Inhale deeply, lengthen the spine. And as you exhale, gently tuck the chin back and release the shoulders down your back, maintaining that lifted, elevated posture. And again, deeply inhale. Lifting your gaze up to the space between the eyebrows, known as the Ajna Chakra, third eye. And exhale. And let's inhale deeply to tune in. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo Om Deeply inhale, suspend the breath, engage the Mula Bandha, gaze to the third eye. And exhale and release. Sat now. I wanted to offer a few tips on the breath and suspension of the breath before we begin. Uh, during the meditation, when you have the urge to inhale, push more breath out. And when we tune in, when I say inhale deeply, hold the breath. If it's very challenging, if you feel like I can't hold it anymore, sip a little bit more air. That usually helps to prolong it by a few seconds, not, not too much. Okay, so fists of anger first. Um, make sure you have your water, you're staying hydrated. Your thumb is coming on the mount of the mercury finger. So this is a mercury finger. This is a mudra that allows uh, for ourselves to express, to allow us to just be who we are without judgment, uh, without self-criticism, 
Uh, it's a backward stroke. Again, a few shoulder circles, you know, you take care of your body as much as you need to. Um, and again, this is a powerful breath of fire through the O-shaped mouth, using the navel center potently, um, not so much puffy cheeks. It's not that, it's gotta come from the depth of your belly button and it's also diaphragmatic a little bit, so the diaphragm works uh, up and down, up and down. Uh, eyes are closed, focusing at the brow point, and we do it for three minutes. Go with the intensity that works for you. I cue you on the last 30 seconds remaining, so if you slack before, I'm just kidding, uh, you can really get it all out. Whatever comes up, just really punch it out. All right, let's begin with the breath first. Close your eyes, O-shaped mouth. <laughs> And begin. Making sure your inhales and exhale through the O-shaped mouth are equal. sure you bring up the energy of anger bring up any situation a person or invent a circumstance that kind of put you over the edge and then just connect to that feeling bring that energy vibration within your body wherever it's lodged in your body bring it out so that you could express it punch it out and kick it out of your aura kick it out of your body <sighs> Go for it. Go full force. shape mouth hold pull the root lock stretch the spine cannon breath out two more times stretch up stretch up squeeze all the muscles in your back hug the spine with your muscles Hold, hold. If you need to exhale, sip a little more air. Powerfully exhale. Last one. Root lock. And inhale. Stay in the 
space. Go within. Hands could be in your lap or in the mudra. I'm just taking a few moments to notice what might have come up for you. Allowing your breath to flow naturally, organically, without you manipulating it in any way. And deeply inhale. And exhale. And when you're ready, you may open your eyes. Take a little bit of water. Okay, so the meditation to uh, resolve inner conflicts, um, you know, when people don't sometimes understand what is inner conflict, it's uh, for me, and this is just my understanding of it, is something that we try to hide about ourselves. And I'll give you an example. So um, I worked at a resort that was clothing optional, and I came across many, many people that were so free-spirited and they enjoyed the place uh, but they had to keep it so secret they could not reveal that part of themselves to anyone not their family not their work you know and imagine just imagine how much energy it takes to keep something secret to pretend that you're not that and you're not this and hide it just imagine how much energy it takes to suppress and how much conflict it creates within yourself. We want to embrace all of our parts fully. We want to integrate all of our parts fully. You know, be it whatever, be it whatever. You know, it, it's, it definitely takes courage to come out. I remember when I told my parents like, hey, I'm working in this resort and there are naked people all over the place. <laughs> Uh, they they took it well but really what choice did they have but it took courage to say like hey I, I applied for a job there and I got it you know and I actually wanted to work there because I really felt that people there were really open and embracing that part of them but then I learned that a lot of them also had to keep it a secret so um, look into those parts of you that you're embarrassed or you're afraid that you'll be judged because 100% of the time it's your own judgment it's your own judgment um, so reevaluate that and use your own intuitive guidance to to decide whether or not you should you know come out with it and embrace it publicly openly whatever maybe share with a friend first and feel that out whatever you know what to do I'm not telling you what to do uh, but, you know, I was just using an example. That was one primary example for, for me in my life. Okay, this uh, meditation is on a suspension of the breath. Just a reminder, inhaling five seconds. So it's small, uh, kind of not sips. It's not fragmented breath. But it's like a, like you smelling something so delicate. And then exhaling the same thing. But on the fifth second, you want to push all the air out, all the air out, and then hold, kind of let your diaphragm and abdominal uh, muscles be like frozen, not moving. It, it takes practice, so don't beat yourself up and don't be so harsh, because practice is we're getting better at it, we're getting better at it. Uh, your eyes are 9 tenth closed, so just to drop the eyelids down, you're going to have a little bit of light coming in, and that's fine. If it feels better for you to fully close your eyes, then do that too and just bring your gaze to the third eye. Um, that's it. I'm going to be using the metronome again to hold, up, to hold us accountable to those seconds because this meditation works really well if we're really honest about our breath and about our counting, okay? But it's a work in progress. Suspension of the breath, if 10 seconds is a lot, 
bring it down to eight as long as it's a little longer than five okay so this is kind of like the ratio i myself am at 10 seconds i'm not able to do 15 yet uh, so not to compare but i'm just letting you know let yourself off the hook and make the meditation work for you rather than you struggling with it all right so your hands are at the heart center here all fingers are together pointing towards each other parallel to the floor thumbs are up elbows are slightly flared out make sure you're sitting up nice and tall chin tucked in chest lifted gazing wherever you want or looking down let's take a deep inhale full exhale and begin inhale in five seconds Exhaling five seconds. Suspending the breath.
made as your last cycle. When you're ready, inhale deeply. Suspend a breath, stretch your arms overhead, hold that breath, pull the root lock, hold the gaze to the third eye. Exhale, shake arms. Inhale, shake a little bit more vigorously so your whole spine shakes, shakes every part of your body. Exhale, last time, deep inhale, shake, 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 bounce, 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 wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Exhale, and just go within once again, sitting comfortably, keeping that meditative space. Drop into your heart, not the mind. What do you feel? What do you sense? What do you notice? Let's take a deep inhale. Sigh it out or exhale. Two more times. Deep inhale. And exhale. One more deep inhale. And exhale. So again, day six is completed. Uh, we're doing really good. I'm getting positive feedback from uh, most of you that are participating, some questions coming on the side and I try to address them. Again, if you have any specific questions personally or whatever, just let me know. I'll be able to help you. If not, I'll hopefully you will provide a resource that will be able to help you. Um, I'm very honored that many of you are participating in this challenge. I do feel that we're in the times where this is very important. Um, and again, I invite you to just look and shine light onto dark corners of your being and embrace all those parts of you no matter how scary it might be uh, please remember that most of the judgment that we put on ourselves is our own mind uh, cloaking and part of it is protecting us but ask yourself do, do you really need that protection at this point can you stand your ground can you stand in your truth can you can you handle can you can you handle you know a rejection Okay, you know, are you strong enough to, to handle it, you know, and, you know, stuff that doesn't need to be in your life will naturally fall off. You don't, you won't have to worry. Habits, beliefs, patterns, people, circumstances and events, just allow it to organically unfold. All right, let's seal our practice with one long sat nam. Bring your hands into the prayer mudra, front of the heart center, lengthen spine, deep inhale, full exhale. Inhale to chant. So Satnam. Satnam, I will see you tomorrow, same time, same, same place. Uh, but on Monday, we'll have to change the time uh, as I have a conflict. Uh, we'll do our challenge at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So whatever time zone you are, let me let it adjust. Uh, and I'll put that in the comments as well, so you know. Satnam, have a blessed weekend.